Um, so, um, you know, the, the topics here are post stratification and missingness, which, you know, maybe at first glance kind of seems like a little bit of a, you know, like how are these two things related? Um, but though I like the, the first sentence in this chapter is when fitting a model to data, um, parameter estimates are often just the beginning. So both of these are sort of like post estimation activities, you know, that, uh, um, or I should say, um, pre, pre or post, I should say, um, um, estimate activity, right? right? In the case of missing this, if you do multiple imputation, I should say you're, you're doing stuff pre estimation. Um, so uh, these are both adjuncts to fitting a model, whether they happen before or after. So post ratification output from a fitted model are combined to make predictions about a new population that can differ systematically from the data. So we'll talk about this in relationship to, you know, sort of, you know, weighting um, samples so that we have, you know, a better estimation of what, what is going on. So that allows us to adjust for differences between, excuse me, sample and population. And then we'll talk about missing this, uh, missing data analysis. So this is, you know, where we look at, um, you know, how much data is missing in our, our data set? What can we do about it? And what, you know, and and how is it missing? Like we'll talk about the, the how of missing this, which is important. So just to start off with this post stratification idea, um, the simplest way of dealing with this is just to use a weighted average. So they use the example in the book of um, support for Trump, I guess. And yeah. so there's Democrats, there's Republicans, and I guess there was independents or something like that. And so, uh, or others, I should say. So um, we have 91% support um, in uh, uh Republicans, which represent 33% of the population, 36% of the population are Democrats and only 5% of them support them. And then the 31% of the others, or excuse me, 31% um, of the population is quote unquote others or non-Republican, non-Democrat, and 49% of those people supported Trump. And so when we add this all together, we get basically a 47% excuse me, uh, approval rating, uh, which is different from the raw estimate. So if we were just to kind of add up, you know, the percentage of people that had one or, you know, that supported Trump, it would be uh, only 45%. So yeah, this weighting gives us a better estimate of, you know, what's going on by, you know, taking in to account, you know, some information about the sample. This is only one piece of information. Obviously, there's other things. I'm only going to do. I'm only doing like the one predictor or the one variable adjustment. You, know, you can do tons of variables if you want. Um, so yeah, this was all taken from the the, the site with the the tidy eval. So we're um, trying to create three different party identifications. Republican, Democrat, Independents. We're creating 254 Republicans, 282 Dems, and 242 Independents. And we're, you know, sending all of the probabilities and all the different preferences and, and things like that. I didn't spend a whole lot of time on this other than just to kind of, you know, run it. So basically all we're, we're with at the end is a data set with party identification and whether or not they voted for Trump, I believe. And right. so um, we're going to now fit this model where we treat this as a factor and say, hey, what's what goes on here? I guess I didn't need to push that button. Actually, I've already run it, but I guess I wanted some more drama. To add, to add <laughs> yeah, to yeah refresh equals zero. Can I avoid all this? Refresh yeah. equals, you know, a little excitement. Um, <laughs> there you go. So um, obviously, Republicans are more likely than anyone to, I mean, relative, you know, compared to Democrats um, to vote for him. I mean, that, that all makes sense. Um, yeah, so we um, then use this to create uh, posterior um, um, uh, uh, probabilities, expected, expected population averages within each cell. Um, so, we do as so, 
And basically what we have here is you know, 46.9% um, approval, but we all, but what's nice here is, is um, we also can have this um, piece of, you know, uncertainty, right? Which is a new piece for us here, right? Which is of course what, a huge theme of what we've done right. about this book, which is, it's not just about getting estimates, it's about getting estimates of the values, about getting estimates of your uncertainty. Um, by the way, uh, so this one of the other things this is all the same code by the way um one of the things that was weird i don't know so um they, they did this whole post um um posterior prediction uh, probability prediction whatever using linear pr um pred and then also logistic which i thought was kind of weird i don't know if you read that but like so I this, agree. I, I was wondering why they're using linear, though. I mean, I, you think you just use logistic, right? So yeah, I mean, I guess at the end of the day, I'm trying to think, like, well, I guess it's well, it's not really this. It's point four six here, right? Um, I guess I don't know. Is it? I guess, they made a comment like when they actually did the well, not this problem, whatever. The, I forgot now. Whatever problem they actually did. One of the examples they made a point saying when we actually did this, we use logistic regression, not linear regression. Well, then why did you? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so I forget what that what that section was. Though. I, don't I, can't, I couldn't I, I couldn't figure that. But anyway, the point is is I, at least I thought my my take home was like you would use the 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 the, the logistic predict you know function. But right. All right. Then the next one. This is um next part of the chapter where we actually want to. Um, Compute. Um, create more fake data, and the fake data is about you know basically it's sex, age, ethnicity, oh, right. and then number. And we want to hypothesize and not. This is oh by the way, so this is all about this is um, the, the thing that we're predicting is just like whether or not they responded on a survey. Right. I think um, so. Non-response. So we have ten percent non. Um, Actually, this was confusing to me. So this is, um, are we saying there's a 10% non-response bias? I, I, I couldn't really figure that out. So, and then this is for obviously, are we saying for um, women versus men? But so, okay. So I guess the, this, this seems weird. Does this seem weird to you? Like, what are you pointing at? Oh, you know what? Damn it. Um, sorry. It's. I'm actually pointing at um, the book. <laughs> well, this. Like, God, I wish you had said something earlier. You see this? How about now? I see your R your R studio still. Oh, goodness. Which was fine when we were talking about that. How about now? Yeah, now I see. Yeah. Okay. The rendered. That's that's unfortunate. Sorry about that. No um. So yeah, this is just the the fake data example in the book um, where we want to um, we want to uh, simulate you know a bunch of people who you know did or didn't answer I guess a question on a survey or something, and we're gonna um, estimate or we're gonna um, look at how sex, age, ethnicity, and how many people there are in that subgroup. You know, um, right. So anyway, so this is the probability, the, the numbers of the population in terms of their their proportions, um, and then we we actually are hypothesized. Yeah, so this is what I was pointing to, right? Um, so we're, we're, we 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 hypothesize a non-response pattern in women, older people, and whites that are more likely to respond than men, right? People and minorities. I guess I don't. So this seems like okay. So this ten percent. Are we saying that only ten percent of the population is responding? I don't know. I don't know what that means. Yeah, so that's the base. So. Right, so I guess the survey was a yes no survey of, of no re of some, you know, doesn't right. matter, right? Just fake data. So, yes no survey. Do you like the color blue? It doesn't really matter, right? And then on top of that, there's this non response issue, right? So, the, the non response issue is not, is, is, um, depends on your age, sex, and ethnicity. So we're not going to get a representative sample. So how do we correct for it? That's what we're that's what we're trying to do to get the right yes no fraction for the population. So the baseline response rate was ten percent, right? And then then relative to that baseline, if you're male, 
I guess you're, you know, you're 10% of your female, even less likely to respond. You don't like being bothered. I don't know. Same thing mm -hmm. with the age, older people are much less uh, likely to respond twice, two times, right? And yeah, I guess so. These are just made up numbers, but that's what that means. So they, yeah, yeah. I guess I, here's one other thing I don't understand. So these are these aren't proportions, I guess, right? Yeah, they're you multiply them by 0.1, right? Yeah, but so like, so why is this 2.5 then? Two and a half per times more than the baseline. Oh, I see. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Sorry. It's been a long week. I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm with you on that. I'm hanging in there. Yeah. Okay. This is, I did work through this piece though. That's why it's familiar to me. Yeah. And then, okay. Here's another one. Like I was like, okay. So assume that the survey runs come from, from a, with these coefficients, I guess. All right. Um, I guess I just don't know how we got these numbers. This is kind of what bugs me, but whatever. Um, uh oh yeah i guess yeah so then um yeah anyway this was uh yeah it gives us the probabilities and then we can take these and fit them to a model i guess and oh, what's that sorry ron hello I think we lost Ron. That was weird, right? Now we're just like, went, bloop. Well, yeah, it was like all of a sudden it was like you were think talking and and then you stopped talking and I thought you were kind of like thinking of so I let, I let you <laughs> I let you like think about it and I was like, Ron, are you still thinking? And like your face and just, I thought you you froze. I'm like, Ryan, are you there? So it took me a while to figure out that it was my network that went down. And then I'm like, oh, let me reset yeah. the modem, do all that crap. Funny. Um, all right. So Let's see let's go back to oh yeah so let me go back to 
So you were just talking about the coefficients for the uh, survey responses. Right, yeah. So, um, oh, wait a minute, actually, it's this one. Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, basically just, um, you know, like just to show kind of like, you know, how, you know, like in this case, we're getting 63% of, um, um, I think that's we're predicting the response, not the non-response, although I could be, I don't know. What's that? The coefficients? Yeah, the 0.63. I'm not sure if that's, if that's. Um, for... No, that's to predict the, um, what the survey answer was. So there's two aspects, right? The, you know, the real underlying thing is some survey question. Yes, no, what is it? It doesn't matter. What's yeah. your favorite, is your favorite color blue? Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, then, so that's saying that 63% of the population post stratified would answer that way, right? Yes, 63%. Mm -hmm. um, that's what that is. And that, that's, does that match our model? Um, we don't know because. <laughs> good question. Um, in terms of. Um, so the baseline was 60%, but then there's all these coefficients. Oh, yeah. Um, so I guess I don't, even know if they, I don't even know if they present it here now that I'm thinking about it. So I have it in my right there. So this oh, is yeah, coefficient. Sorry. No. Yeah, sorry. Right coefficient is 60%. That's the oh. intercept. So right. I guess, and then post draft, you know, so then the point is like these are the built-in underlying secret numbers that the universe knows and you don't know, right? Um, about how it works. Then you do your fit to to get you know you get the best estimates of those coefficients and then you use the population statistics to figure out what the population response actually is so it's not necessarily six percent it's whatever it's whatever these coefficients are right and but the fit uh, was good so the fit actually got numbers very close to that so it is what it would it you know yeah so anyway yeah i guess um i mean yeah i, I, really, I, I can't see myself really using post i mean i don't know maybe but i don't know about you but it, this doesn't seem like Something I guess um, for me I don't know, I'm not doing that kind of analysis either. Right. Where I'm trying to say like what this what the population survey responses or something like that is, but that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. No, I guess it is. I mean, it's also I guess to me it's like so much of it's predicated on um, much more interesting the coefficients, right? So well, not only <laughs> that, but like. Um, you know, are you, do you have the right variables measured to right. do, to, to, to actually do the stratification? I mean, sometimes that's not always a given. Um, he makes that point that you got to just have to, you know, get all that you can and then, you know. <laughs> right. Nothing's perfect. So let's move on to missing this. Yeah. Um, just because we have, um, you know, you got to go through your stuff and we're kind yeah. of a little behind. So, okay. yeah, the, um, I have I have to jump just a little bit before. Uh, okay, no worries. Before. So understood. Um, so obviously, missing this is a, is a part of you know research, unfortunately. Um, but it's important that we sort of um, you know uh, know we have some speculation about you know why data is missing. Of course, the book points out we'll never really know for certain um, why something is missing or not missing, um, but- At least you have a wrong model about it. That's all right. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, you know, what we hope for is missing this completely at random, which means whether or not someone is missing data in a particular variable has nothing to do with, you know, who they are or other values and other variables. Um, so this is, you know, the sort of the, the, the hope for gold standard, so to speak. Next one, missingness at random. It's the probability of the variable missing depends on another variable, but that variable is some one that we have. So if it's gender or age or political party or, or whatever, um, we can use that information to account for why that data is missing. So there are some like sort of um, corrections that we can apply if, if we have this scenario. However, um, it's possible that we have what's called missingness at, you know, for non-random reasons, which means 
that we have missingness that is due to variables that we have not measured, something that is beyond the scope of our, of our measurement in this particular study. So it could be that the missingness is due to some unobserved predictor. You know, maybe there's some kind of construct called, you know, hating surveys that, you know, we forgot to measure that. And so the people that really hate surveys are more likely to, you know, fail to respond. Well, okay, since yeah. we didn't measure that, we, we can't really account for like what it is, well, you know. The, the, <laughs> you can't why. ask somebody if they hate surveys because they won't answer that question. Well, no, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you could, but it, you know, probably it would be have its own set of problems. <laughs> and then also it could be that the actual outcome itself is responsible, right? So perhaps if you're wealthier, you right. know, if you're, maybe you're, um, you know, the, the variable that, you know, that you, you're looking at is, is earnings or, you know, uh, income or something like that. And, you know, people that are, have higher or really low earnings, maybe less likely to, to right. respond. So it's not some other variable that might predict missing this in that earnings variable. It's the actual earnings itself. Um, so how can we sort of do all this stuff? We can do what's called complete case analysis, which if we're being honest is what most people do and have done for decades and decades. Um, and probably not you know, necessarily warranted. I can say I, you know, having worked in observational research where I'm using electronic health records you know, you have who you have, you know what I mean? And so it's, it's like, you're not really missing data ever. You just have people that came in that, you know, came in for certain, you know, for healthcare. And so right. it's like, it's kind of hard to think about missing this. So a lot of times you're just, you know, kind of using available data, but, you know, there are situations where people were supposed to have been measured at different time points and they're, they're missing stuff. And if they're missing, you know, one or more, time points, then you can exclude them. So uh, uh, this next one was kind of new to me. I hadn't really heard of this before. Although, I mean, I guess I hadn't heard of it called this before, I should say, this available case analysis. So instead of getting rid of people who have missing data, we get rid of variables that have missingness. Yeah. So that way we can have a bigger sample with just fewer data, right? So, or fewer variables, I should say. Yeah, I mean, you probably have done that, right? You're like, oh, this variable sure. you get that much data on you. Yeah. Throw, you know, I can use that column. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, I just, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Never, I've never heard it called that either. Yeah. I've never yeah. heard it called available case. I just said, you know, I just said, let's look, you just, <laughs> let's not look at that variable. Yeah, exactly. Um, but now you have a fancy word for it. So next time. a fancy word for Well, we did an available case, case study. Yeah, exactly. But, um, <laughs> So non-response weighting is sort of um, kind of what we've been, um, well, we kind of did weighting up above, obviously, before. So we reweight the samples so that representative is, is um, restored. So build a model to predict the non-response in whatever variable that you're interested in. And then the inverse yeah. predicted probabilities could be used as a survey weight to make um, complete case. So yeah, so basically you're just, you're still doing complete case analysis. You're just including this in you know, these inverted uh, inversive um, pr predicted probabilities um, as like a, a weighting scheme, so to speak, yeah. right? So, um, you know, that's, that's interesting. Mean imputation is like an old school one that like, if I'm being honest, like these, these next two are the ones that like in every like old school job I've ever had, there's always some like crusty older Man, man or woman who you know likes to do mean imputation or or um, last value carried forward. So in the case of mean imputation, um, you're just taking you know the mean of all of all values and just plugging that into the missingness. Um, there's a lot of reasons that that I'm not necessarily good at explaining for why that's a bad idea. It certainly can um, reduce the strength of the effect and do a bunch of stuff that we don't want to happen. Um, in the case of, uh, is what we all do anyway. <laughs> what's that? What'd you say? Uh -oh. Damn. Well, I'm going to keep going since Ron is, um, yeah. So, just so we can get through this. Um, yeah. So last, uh, value carried forward is, um, just basically, let's say there's four time points and um, participant I has finished the first three, but the last one is missing. So we just take the value from their third completion and um, just, you know, fill it in there. 
Um, and then the last one is the most sort of advanced and probably modern, I guess you could say, in terms of what you know is the gold standard, this idea of multiple imputation. So instead of just imputing one value and then plugging it into the missing... Oh, oh good, you're here. Yeah, I... Uh, I just never just keep going up and down. It's so bizarre. I just, kept go I just kept going because I figured, you know, we just get, at least get it on the recording. You know. Okay, good deal. So, um, good, good plan of me. Yeah, yeah. Just since we're kind of running out of time. Um, so, from multiple mutation, we 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 impute multiple times, so that gives us, you know, a series of estimates. But it also by by looking at the series of estimates and how close they are, not close they are to each other. We can kind of get a sense of the uncertainty. So once again, a common theme in this book has been: don't just look at the estimates; look at the how uncertain you are. So I'm going to use this um, data from the book, this SIS. I forget what that what this data was. And then they make he, he makes up a little function to impute, you know, to tell us when we should impute. Of a value. So if it's missing, we use this, um, we use a and underscore impute uh, um, or as an argument. So, and then they, they talk about this idea of top code and zero coding. So top code is like, you know, for, for the missing values that are factorial, like, you know, or, or the or numerical, I should say, like, what's the top value that you would um, kind of want to stick with? Or like, you know, where, where would you want to sort of top out at? Um, so this is one function here. So he also talks about, and I didn't include this in my list, but another thing you can do for imputation is just sort of um, do what's called uh, logical rule imputation. So impute uh, zero earnings using logical rules if they worked, you know, zero months. And so like, that, that makes sense, right? So maybe for whatever reason, we had, a, a you know, a blank space in earnings, um, but it could be just because they, you know, they just started their job or whatever. So this in this case, we're saying in the cases where they haven't you know been at this job for any time, just go ahead and put zero as the earnings, and then we can you know create a database of this and then um, um, impute a, a subset of earnings that are non-zero and on the linear scale. So uh, yeah, we're only looking at earnings that are above zero, and um, we're using their gender, their age, their race, immigration status, all these things to kind of try to predict what their earnings would be. And unsurprisingly, um, being over 65 is a um, pretty poor predictor for earnings. Uh, being white is a, a positive predictor for being earnings. Um, education is positive. Um, you know, so you get the sort of the, the gist of, of things here. Um, we're then going to make those um, probability predictions. Um, oh yeah, then they also um, talked about doing a square root. I don't know, they also talked about transformations. I didn't really get into this, I mean, I read that briefly, but um, just na the, by the nature of earnings not being normal, perhaps, you know, if we use the square root transformation, that will be a better sort of, you know, story for us. Um, I didn't really spend much time on this and then um yeah so oh yeah and then they and then like so basically in all these examples he's using like different pieces like some sort of you know square root scale transformation and then this top coding thing right so remember like if 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 you know if a variable you know is tops out at a certain thing like you know plug in that value i guess so I don't know. I don't want to go through all of this because we only got like about 15 minutes left and I want to spend some time on um, your stuff. So let's do that. How about we just go through yours? And Okay, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just did that one problem, 17.6, I want to say. I'm not really sure. Let me bring up our studio and I'll remember. <laughs> if I drop out again, I'm going to, I'm prepared to do my hotspot here. I just was setting that up by your... Yeah, no worries. Of course, our studio has an update. Of course, why not have an update? <laughs> I won't do the update. Uh, let's see. I am in the right spot. So let me just go ahead and share a screen. Where'd, the, where'd Zoom go? There it is. Our studio. Yeah. All right. So you should see my book club. Yep. See it. Let me find the right section here. 
So this was, the idea was uh, for this one is to find some data that you like. I'm like, all right, I found some data. I don't know if I like it. And I just decided to use the, M the MPG thing since it's built in, right? Uh, and so this is the data. Actually, let me, I guess I gotta quickly do the old initialization. This first part is just redoing the thing you did already. Yeah. Um, in preparation to do that, find that census data, and I kind of get up on it. So, so this is the data right here. So I, I chose the miles per gallon versus I did a transformation on the displacement just to make it more linear. So log displacement, right? Yeah. And so that's going to be my data that I'm going to then fake out uh, missing data on. Um, first, I'm just going to redefine a variable to do log displacement, call it L displacement, and then remove displacement just so to avoid typos, <laughs> right? Um, then we first do a full regression on the full data, just see how it looks with full regression. And I get the slope is minus 9.4 plus minus 0.4, okay? Wait, can you remind me, oh, miles per gallon, sorry. Miles per gallon versus log displacement, right? So yeah. this says that the, you know, every additional log displacement reduces your uh, gas mileage by 9.4. So it's an exponential type thing. Um, let's see. So the next trip now, then this just is a find some way to generate missing data at random and make it depend on the um, dependent variable, uh, MPG in this case, right? Right. So I just made up something. This is what I made up. Don't worry about the numbers. I played around with a bit to try to get something that seemed interesting. So this is, I decided that for the low mileage, more likely to be missing. Just, you know, I figured, hey, they're probably like, ah, eh, we won't report that. It's pretty bad. <laughs> it's just, right. It's an idea. You, I don't think it's legally allowed to be that, but just an idea of something, right? right? And the people that are, you know, much higher gas mileage are going to be eager to get that number out there. So it's much easier to find. Um, so this is a simulation. Forget about, don't worry about this. Um, probably better ways to do this, but um, I just computed uh, just using, you know, uh, random chance for based on the probability of missing based on the miles per hour, I generate some missing data. Um, 50, about half of them are missing. That was the goal to have half of them missing. Um, that's shown there. And then we can do a regression now on, the, uh, on, on uh, X on Y, the backwards regression for the imputation, right? So first I just do it. He wanted us to compare it both with the full data, in which case I get minus 0 0.07 plus or minus 0 0.03. And then with the missing data, and the idea was you're supposed to see because the missing data depends on the miles per hour and I'm regressing on um, miles per hour, right? So I'm regressing backwards, right? I'm back regressing, <laughs> regressing right. backwards, sounds funny. But I'm trying to figure out a model for the displacement based on the miles per hour, right? And what I've done here then is do the same fit log displacement on miles per hour, um, but now with the missing data, whether some of the data is, is, is intentionally missing, but it's a complete analysis. So it leaves out those things. And we get minus 0.063 plus minus 0.047. So it's not, I mean, they say they should show that it's consistent. I guess it's, you know, borderline consistent. It's within, uh, you know, maybe one sigma. Yeah. They kind of touch each other, but it's not terribly consistent. Um, so I'm not sure. Like I tried different things. Sometimes they'd be consistent. Sometimes they wouldn't be consistent. So, I mean, I don't know. I didn't really run a bunch of, I didn't, I did spend a lot of time trying different missing models to try to get, in some cases, these are consistent, but if these are consistent, then the next part didn't work out that well. And I still didn't work out that well, in my view. So now I'm going to do the, now we're going to pretend that we have the real data is this missed data miss. I'm going to do a regression on it and not do any imputation at all, right? Just to see what happens, right? Right. Uh, this is the complete case. And the fit now I get minus 9.8 plus or minus 0.7. There's two things about that. One is, um, the slope is bigger, um, only about one sigma bigger. So is it inconsistent? We're supposed to show that it is inconsistent. It's kind of barely inconsistent. I don't know. Um, but it is bigger. And more importantly, I guess, or more interesting, the noise is higher. It's because uh, this makes sense because we have a lot less data now because half the data is now missing. So the, no the fit is more noisy. Yeah. Uh, and it's got a bigger slope, which kind of makes sense because the, the slope still has some curvature to it. But I don't know. I, I don't know why it should be inconsistent necessarily unless i had a really weird missing model yeah I, didn't really, I don't know if you tried this problem either but i just couldn't make it i tried many things to try to make it more inconsistent and i maybe i just need to use a different data set i don't know maybe it needs to be more nonlinear. maybe i shouldn't do the if i, if I didn't do the log transform that'd be nonlinear. And then there would definitely be some dependence on the missing data because if i leave out the lower data then i wouldn't see the curve would necessarily change right 
Right. Is that what they're trying to get at? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Maybe I shouldn't have made the data so linear now that I think about it. Uh, okay, now we're going to use um, the fit, the original impute fits I did above to try to fill in the missing data with fake, uh, with random missing data. So I'm just using the uh, posterior predict to generate posterior predictions for each point that's missing using my imputation model. And I have all these now uh, blue dots that are now just you know fake data that's been imputed on. Look at the uh, the blue, the lower right hand corner. That's interesting. Yeah, because um, the guys with high displacement have low miles gone. They were more likely to be. Remember that was the model. Remember I made it so those would be more likely to be missing. So all these are just BS, right? <laughs> just based on. No, no, I just it, just it it looks credible. I mean, even though it I mean, does look credible, isn't it? That's what I thought was interesting too. Like I, I mean, obviously, believe, you know, I mean, like I mean, the original data is uh, here. Doesn't look that yeah. different, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. So that looks good. So, so that's the imputation model. And you can fit the data now on the full imputation. And sure enough, the error bar goes down because you have more data. The slope is really far off though, right? I mean, my imputation is kind of garbage. Well, you're not supposed to just do a single random choice. You're supposed to do like N of them. So I do like a hundred of these uh, simulations, right? Where I generate random imputation over and over again. And then I come with a slope that's very close actually to the original. Uh, How long did that take to run? Oh, it's not terrible. I mean. Let's see, it's not that long. Okay, I like it's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like I had to go get lunch. Uh, but yeah. then you can also calculate the error on that. It is reduced now up to 0.6. Uh, the original error was 0.4 without the missing data. It shouldn't be the same as the without the missing data. There's missing data here. And yeah. I just used that formula from the book where you take the average uh, uh, variance for each individual coefficient and then there you go, it's done. And then add in the variance uh, from the slope, right? And then take square root. So that, By the way, I mean, there's, a, there's a one plus one over n that I left out because n is 100. It doesn't, that's does not going to make any difference. You need right? to set seed for this, by the way. I think I did. Oh, you did. Did you? Oh, did you someplace? You probably set seed someplace. Yeah. Well, I didn't set it here. So that would, this should give a different answer. Um, yeah. So but you, must, you must have set the seed someplace up here. I did. Up top. Yeah. Anyways. And so it all matters they do it once so well i just re-ran this so so it, it actually will do a different sim i should have set seed again here but anyway oh no i did rerun it they run it for the first time so yeah that's why you get the same answer now but now if i re-ran it you get a different answer right that explains well, i think that seed is still it's still in, it's it's still yeah sad, yeah so. so any event that that's that's the answer to that so 9.3 plus minus 0. 0.6 which is consistent with the original right uh, but with bigger error not as big as Doing with the complete case analysis where the error was like 0.8, twice the error, but uh, you know the invitation seems to have helped this this fit this point, I guess, okay. a lot of that. And that's it. I thought it was interesting. I mean, I I yeah. didn't really see there was supposed to be. It seems like they wanted you to get some point like, oh look, this uh, you know the reverse fit is consistent because you know um, the missing data is on the on the outcome. So when you're doing the reverse fit, so it's fine. But it wasn't fine. And then, the, you know, the um, when you go the, the other way, it's supposed to be inconsistent because the missing data does depend on the variable. But it wasn't like that. It wasn't that inconsistent. So I don't know. Maybe there's something I'm missing there. Or there definitely is something I'm missing, but I just don't know what it is and at this point. I'm past care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, um, I feel like, I mean, I, this is a very bad thing to say, maybe, but I've, you know, when you, I feel like every textbook I've ever gone through like this, toward the last chapters, it's, you can really tell that the authors are running out of steam a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't no, know that these problems have reached, have been really uh, tested, you know, what do you call it? Uh, play tested as much as the rest of the book has been. <laughs> yeah. Because there should have been more hints on how to get what they really wanted to show there, but. Hey, um, on the sign-up sheet, I took the. Uh, I hope this isn't too presumptuous, but I just took the. the How so, dare you? I took the, I took the presumption of just giving us each the alter, alternating weeks. So next week you're doing eighteen, I'm doing nineteen, then you do twenty, and then I'm doing twenty-one. Which yeah, that works. Yeah, you want to you want to talk about like um, and running out of steam. I mean, I can only imagine what twenty-one will be like in terms of just like you know random, you know, trying Actually, to fit twenty-one all has got. 21 is a uh, very short, it's a short chapter where it's kind of like, hey, this is a teaser for the next book, which they still haven't published yet. Oh, wow. I think. We'll have to do a book club for that when it comes out. Yeah. <laughs> that's going to be the multi-level 
going to a lot of detailed multi-level analysis. I think yeah. the main focus of that, but it has I haven't even seen, they haven't really done that yet, so. Yeah. All yeah, right, well, uh, we got it in somehow, um, even though uh, your technology didn't seem to. Oh my goodness. And then I was late because of a meeting. Yeah, the last chapter is like a nice little relaxing chapter, so that'd be good. <laughs> It yeah. looks like it. I don't know. Yeah. All right, man. Thanks. Well, All right. Thanks, Ryan, for sticking with me here. And uh, no problem. The interruptions. And, no worries. Uh, good luck with your next meeting. Thank you. I'll see you uh, next. Well, I'll see you Monday, but I'll see you next week too. Oh, wait. I got to put the stop thing in. Okay. Yep. See you then. Bye.